One of the <laughs> primary challenges that is the subtext of my research is that language and identity are deeply connected. So when we communicate, anytime I communicate, I'm sending two messages. It's the, the content and who you understand me to be or who I want you to understand me to be. And why that's a problem is that in, in urban context, particularly in urban schools and in science classrooms, is the teachers have an expectation for the students and the students also have an expectation of themselves. And for students, it's difficult sometimes to sound scientific and feel comfortable. Conversely, for teachers, they expect these uh, 15 and 16 year old kids to sound like scientists, which is very unreasonable. And so the nature of the way we talk in classrooms is we play what my colleague, Dr. Gene Lithcott calls a, a game of guess what's in my head. So we ask scientific questions, we ask students to answer them, and then everyone loses in the end, right? So the, the idea that's, that's fundamental is that a lot of what students know and are really, really clear about is communicated in non-scientific language. And we need to prepare teachers to really understand that there are these rich parallels between the way that students understand ideas and the way that they can communicate them in both science and non-scientific language practices. And so the heart of my research is to study that idea. And there's two problems. The first is that if we don't recognize this, we really don't understand the brilliance that young people have and bring with them to a learning environment. And then two, we, we communicate in such complex language that kids just don't develop a clear understanding of the science that they're learning. And so that's the, the basics of the research. Uh, some of my favorite research comes from uh, Professor Michelin Chi, Mickey Chi from Arizona State University. And it's this idea of the self-explanation effect. And it's pretty simple. Is that the more I get an opportunity to explain, the clearer I am about a concept. And you know, it's, that's not news, it's kind of colloquial, right? The more you talk about something, the more you understand it. So the irony is that in the classroom what happens is that the, the only person who really gets the chance to talk a lot is the teacher. So teachers become phenomenal at understanding whatever it is that they're teaching. But then they set up a, a classroom environment where only the people who have the right answer get an opportunity to speak. And the irony is that if I need to talk about something regularly to understand it, and the only person who gets an opportunity to speak is either the teacher or the one student who understands the answer, then we're fundamentally assuring that the majority of the classroom never gets an opportunity to speak which then means that they never get an, a develop, a, an opportunity to develop a clear understanding of the idea. We've identified that essentially students are very thorough at understanding either components of an idea or the whole idea, but the language that they use to, to communicate that understanding is their everyday language. And so the paradigm has to shift. Instead of looking for right answers communicated in science language, teachers have to have enough pedagogical content knowledge to hear the right answer, even if it's communicated in non-traditional academic language. It may be everyday language, it may be the language of a sport, but students have a great deal of understanding that is just embedded in the cultural ways of communicating. And there's a rationale for that, is if you learn in a particular context, you're going to communicate with the language of that context, and so that's what teachers should be looking for. So what we did then experimentally was to look at, well, if we taught using students' language resources to say then, let's start teaching and introduce an idea in language that we know students learn or know already, and then we'll shift and we'll ask them to use new science language, but present it almost like we're teaching a foreign language, where you're going to now use your new words, but we're sure that they understand the ideas. We run several experiments and discovered uniformly that the students who are taught that way outperform students where they're offered science language at the same time as a new idea. Right? So that, that's critical for us. And so moving forward, what becomes really pertinent is that we kind of change our paradigm for how we assess students in a moment. So informative assessment practices um, in our classroom speaking practices and the way that we design instruction, where we ask students to communicate and we offer an opportunity for students to communicate in everyday language, but we explicitly give them lots of opportunities to explain in science language, understanding that it's, it is a language learning process and they're going to learn the idea if they have an opportunity to explain it multiple times. The idea that I walk into a room and I'm learning chemistry for the first time, I'm learning biology, I'm learning physics for the first time, the expectation should not be that I can fully articulate my science ideas from the first opportunity that I'm given. So taking an iterative approach where students are given an opportunity to explain, revise, explain and revise is how they'll become masters of language. It, it is what we do in foreign language classes. The students are told to speak Spanish exclusively or, or told to speak French exclusively because they're required to do it in the context of an explanation is that's how we develop fluency. And so the idea in science should be very similar. As we give students opportunities to explain, we expect them to use 
versions of, of science language that are not as exactly accurate, but in pursuit of this direction where they'll continue to get better, we've created an iterative, communicative, communicative space where students get an opportunity to speak using science language. So in, when thinking about interventions or what we can do to improve academic language learning in science, there's some things that I think are, are very pragmatic. The first is preparing teachers. And so the way that we prepare teachers, we need to break this right-wrong paradigm where we can help teachers understand that there's multiple language resources that students bring to classrooms and that they need to learn to use them, which requires teachers to develop greater pedagogical content knowledge, but it is, it is one step that can be taken. The second is, and I'm, I'm really excited about where we're headed in the multimedia world, but we have an opportunity there. And the opportunity is we can use those everyday language resources that students bring with them. Um, for example, we, we develop some hip hop videos that teach basic science ideas, but use them in pursuit of academic language instruction. So the idea is I'll introduce an idea in a culture and a language that students are familiar with, but then I'll shift and give them lots of opportunities to explain phenomena using the science language. And so moving forward, I think that the interventions to this problem are one, rich research base that really gives us some really practical solutions, including ways that we train teachers to understand academic language learning, um, curricula, curricula that explicitly embeds academic language learning. I think in this common core, uh, in the new movement towards recognizing we want students to think in, in critical ways, we fundamentally left language off the table. And so we don't think about how language learning is a critical component of that process. And then thirdly, we have a multimedia world that's available to us where we can provide curricular resources, supplemental curricular resources, all of which can be deeply rooted in, in academic language learning. So research-wise, I'm hoping to move that direction, but I'm hoping policymakers, curriculum developers, and, and everyone interested in students learning really places a particular emphasis on how language learning is connected to identity because we can make better products that way.